All right, guys, here's the video for the study guide review. Um, I almost forgot to do it. You guys can thank first period for reminding me about it. All right, so let's talk about this. I'm going to try and go pretty quick because this is a pretty long study guide, and I don't want this video to be super long. So here we go. Study guide for functions. Tell whether or not the following representations are functions explaining your answer. So let's talk about ordered pairs. Remember that for ordered pairs, we're looking at the x values. Remember, this is functions. Functions are not a function. We're not talking about linear or nonlinear yet. So I've got a 6, a 7, an 8, and a 9. Since these do not repeat, this is a function. x values do not repeat or have more than one y value to them. Okay? Same thing we're going to look at for number two on a table. We want to just check the x values. If any of them repeat, we want to see if their y values are the same or different. So x values are right here. I have a negative 3, a negative 2, a 0, a negative 3, and then a positive 2. Now, this negative 3 has a y value of 9. This negative 3 has a, um, a y value of negative 9. These are different, and so because the... Um, this is not a function, and it's because there are x repeats itself. It's really the easiest way to say that. Okay, and then just circle the negative threes. All right, graphs. Remember, with graphs, if we're trying to tell if it's a function, it needs to pass the vertical line test. So if at any point I draw a vertical line on this graph, it should only connect one time with the graph in order for it to be a function. Since that crosses two times, it's not a function. So not a function does not pass the vertical line test. The VLT, that's what we're going to call that, vertical line test, so we don't have to write it out. Okay, this graph here, if at any point I draw a vertical line and it only intersects one time, Okay, I did three of them, only intersects one time. There's no point on here where it would intersect more than one time. So this one is a function. It does pass the vertical line test. Okay, now equations. Remember, there are a couple things we're looking for when we're talking about functions. Um, y cannot have an exponent, and we can't have x equals a number can't have like x equals 7, okay, that can, we can't have that. So um, if you look here, my y is squared, and so this one is not a function because y is, y is squared or has an exponent, okay, that's y. Over here, remember that x can be squared for it to be a function. Um, it can have any exponent on it, just y. In order for it to be a function, y can't. And so since y is fine and x, this is okay, so this one is a function um, because y is not squared. Okay. All right, that's functions and not a functions. Let's talk about comparing functions now. So now we need to compare two different functions together to see if it's a function or not, or which one, whatever it's asking. So this one wants us to find the one with the greater rate of change. Remember, rate of change is just another word for slope. Okay, so which one has the bigger slope? So with this one, it's already set up in slope-intercept form. So the slope on this one, or the rate of change, is 5, 6. Now, this one right here, I have to do some work, too, to find my slope or my rate of change. Remember that the formula for it is y minus y over x minus x. So these are my x's. These are my y's. I need to pick two points. So I'm going to pick this point here and this point here. So if it's easier, again, write these as ordered pairs. So this one's 1, 15, 75, and this one is 3, 17, 25. So we're subtracting the y's and then we're subtracting the x's. A lot of you guys get these mixed up, so make sure you're paying attention to that. So I'm going to subtract the big one and then or the small one from the big one. So I'm going to do 1725 minus 1575 over and 3 minus 1. 
So 1725 minus 1575 is 75. I, I like feel like I'm talking about money, so I want to keep wanting to say 75 cents, but I don't, I don't think it's money. I don't know. But it's 0. 0.75, and then 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, so I don't know about you guys. I need to move this really quick because I'm holding it up, and it's not working very well for me. All right, I don't know about you guys, but in order for me to compare um, – rates of change or whatever, I have an easier time doing it in decimal form. Okay, so if you have an easier time doing it in decimal form, then by all means you can change these to decimals like I'm about to do. Okay, so all you do, remember a fraction is just a division problem, so this one's 5 divided by 6. So 5 divided by 6 gives me 8.33333, so I'll just do 0 0.83 and put a bar over it. Okay, and then this one Wait a minute, I think I subtracted that wrong, you guys. Ah, I did, that's supposed to be 1.5, 1 1.5. 1 .5. Okay, that's your, this is your little, um, um, on, the, on the test, the uh, bonus question will be, which question number did I mess up on? It'll be quite, the answer will be seven. So that's your bonus question if you're paying attention. There might be more. Okay, so 1.5 divided by two, and that gives me, oh, that's C. I knew that there was a reason why I was thinking it was 0 0.75. 0 0.75 is what it is after it's divided by 2. So now I can tell which one's bigger. So 0 0.83 is bigger or greater than 0 0.75. And so number function number 1 is the bigger one. Okay? And I know that because 5, 6 is greater than a half divided by 2. Or... Heavens, I'm really messing up this question, aren't I? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Number eight. Is that focusing? Here we go. Um, which function has a greater rate of change and explain? So you can see that both of these are equations. Now the problem with these is, is that they're not in slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. So we need to get them into that form before we can compare their slopes. So again, we're looking for the greater rate of change, so the bigger slope. Okay? So solve this one for y. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So I have 5y equals 2x plus 10. Divide by 5. y equals 2 fifths x plus 2. Okay, so for this one, my rate of change or my slope is 2 fifths. Okay, now let's solve this one for y. So add 6x to both sides. 3y equals 6x plus 18. Divide everything by 3. y equals 2x plus 6. Okay, because 6 divided by 3 is 2, and then 18 divided by 3 is 6. Okay, so this one's slope is 2. So I don't even have to change these two decimal. I know that two holes is much bigger than part of a hole. So function two is the bigger one. And I know that because two is greater than two fifths. Okay. All right. Next page. Okay, number nine. At the movies, Sam and Zek, Zek each buy a box of candy. Zek eats three candies every 15 minutes. Talk about self-control. That is, holy cow, I'd have that box gone in less than 15 minutes. The number of candies Sam has left based on the amount of time is shown in the graph. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to know who's eating the gummy candies at a faster rate and how do you know? Okay, so let's talk about Zek because Zek is up here in the words, okay? So Zek eats three candies every 15 minutes, okay? So we're, according to this graph right here, the number of candies is our Y, 
and then the time is our X. So when we go to do this, we want to do the same thing. So we want to put candies on top and minutes on bottom. So for Zek, his is three candies every 15 minutes. Okay, and we can simplify this to one candy every five minutes. Now for Sam, we need to find slope on the graph here. And we wanna pay attention to the numbers on the X and the Y axis. This one's going up by 10 and this one's going up by twos. Okay, so I need to find two good points. So here's a good point here. And there's another good point right there. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my triangle between my two points, always going up or down first. So I need to go down and then over. There's my triangle, okay. So he went down two boxes, but there were two, so two, four. So he went down four, so Sam. And because he's eating, you know what I forgot to tell you guys? Because he's eating these, he's losing them, right? So this actually should be minus three candies every 15 minutes or minus one candy every five minutes, okay? All right, and then, um, so he went down two, Sam's eating two, or sorry, four, good heavens, you guys four candies, and then in 10, 20, 30 minutes. So he's eating four candies in 30 minutes. Holy cow. Okay, we can simplify that to do, 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 um, two candies every 15 minutes. Oh, so we didn't have to simplify this one because we want to simplify ones that are equivalent. So we can compare their 15 minutes. So Zek is eating three candies in 15 minutes and Sam is eating two candies in 15 minutes. So who is eating the candies at a faster rate and how do you know? Well, Zek's eating them at a faster rate because he's eating more per 15 minutes, right? So Zek, because he eats three every 15 minutes and Sam only eats two. Okay, so Zek's faster at a greater rate. Okay, number 10. In Chicago, the cost to take a taxi can be represented by the equation y equals 0.40x plus 250, where x is the number of miles driven and y is the total cost. The cost of a taxi in San Francisco is shown in the table below. In which city is the rate per mile higher and how do you know? Okay, so rate per mile, we want that per mile, that's our slope, okay? So rate is slope, so we wanna know how much it is per mile and we wanna compare them. So in Chicago, it's the slope of the equation. So right here, so Chicago is 40 cents per mile. Okay, that one was easy. We didn't have to do any work there other than to just pull it out, oh, sorry. I guess I need to zoom out a little. Um, pull it out of the equation up there in the um, thing up there. But for San Francisco, we have to actually find the slope in the table. So again, from a slope from a table, remember this is my x, this is my y. I need to pick two points, so this one here and this one here, and then use slope formula. So y minus y over x minus x. So 510 minus 285 and then five minus zero. 510 minus 285 is 225. And then five minus zero is five. So what we've got right now, San Francisco, is $2.25 for five miles. But we can't really compare five miles to one mile. So we can either multiply these by five or we can just divide both of these by five, either way. So I'm just gonna find my per mile one. So I'm gonna divide this by five and this by five. And San Francisco is gonna end up with 45 cents per mile. Okay, so this one's 40 cents, this one's 45 cents. He wants to know in which city is the rate per mile higher and how do you know? So San Francisco is higher, San Fran, I'm gonna abbreviate that, is higher. It's 45 cents per mile. Chicago is only 40 cents. Okay. 
And yes, I expect you to explain this to me in this way. I know that these ones over here, you can't really explain them other than to just show this right here like this because there's no words, there's no, there's no story behind it. But when there's a story behind it like these, you should be able to give me these sentences, okay? Not just uh, San Francisco and then just leave it at that, especially if it tells you, ask you how do you know or explain how you know, okay? All right, bottom, number 11. Through 13. 11 through 13. Circle the equations below that are linear. Okay. Which ones are linear? Now, they're equations, so the thing that we need to remember is, is that in order for them to be linear, we the equations cannot have x with an exponent. So no exponent on x. And can't be in the denominator. Okay, so as long as they don't have these two things, we're good. So here's x, it's not in the denominator, so it's linear, or it's squared. Here's x, it's in the denominator, so that one is nonlinear. Here's x, it's got an exponent, so nonlinear. Here's x, it is not in the denominator, it's multiplying by 1 15th, so it's linear. Okay. With a table, remember we need a constant rate of change. So we need to see what's going on here. So we've got plus two, plus two, plus two. This wants to know does it represent a linear function and then explain how you know. So this is a point two, so let's see. That's gonna be, it adds 0.18. And if you're not sure how I got that, if you just do two minus and then point two, it'll give you 0.8. So the one for, the the one that you're going to minus the one you're at, basically. And then that adds 1.8. And then let's see, if I do 3.8 plus 1.8, will I get 5.6? Yes, I will. So that one is also adding 1.8. So this is linear. And explain why or why not. It has a constant rate. Oh, I can't spell. Constant rate of change that is 1.5 over 2 so of 1.8 over 2 so this is linear because it has a constant rate of change of 1.8 over 2 okay all right number 13 Oh, speaking of, we need some, we need a quick help on one of our questions. So here's the deal. On question number eight, it says pick all the answers that are correct. I'll give you a hint. Two of them are correct, two of them are not. Okay, so make sure on number eight you pick at least two. All right. Number 13. Does the graph below represent a linear function? Explain why or why not. Well, remember, for a graph to be linear, it needs to be a straight line. It can't have any bends, no curves, no nothing. So this is nonlinear because it is not a straight line. It's curved. You could put nonlinear because it's curved instead of not a straight line. But either way, it's not linear. Okay, next page. So, so far I've given you a, a, so I told you about the bonus for number seven, and then I gave you a hint over here. I'll probably give you another hint on this page while we're doing this page. All right, number 14 and 15. Write equations from the tables and graphs. So, Ezra is paying his dad back for money that he borrowed to pay for a car repair. Use the graph to answer the questions. Write an equation to represent the situation below. So if I need to write an equation, I need slope and y-intercept. Oops, I should be using a pencil for this. And y-intercept, okay? So to find slope, just like we did on the previous page, find two points. So that one's a good one right there. That's a good one right there. And that one. So there's three good points on here. Draw your triangle. So I'm gonna use these two points here. So I have to go down and then to the right. So there's my triangle. Now I, I need to pay attention to the numbers on the axes. So I'm going down, these by hundreds, so 100, 
200, 300, so down 300, so minus 300. And then these are just going by ones, so one, two, three, four. Okay. Technically, that would simplify. We could simplify that if we wanted to, and we probably will, but I have a squiggly mark there, and I can't write right there. So I'll probably simplify it before I put it in the equation. And then my y-intercept is just where my line intersects my y-axis, which is right here at 700. So 700. Now I'm going to simplify this fraction. Now I know that they're both divisible by 2, but I'm going to show you guys in my calculator how I do it. The n over d button, minus 300, go down, put 4, scroll over. Oh, you don't really have to. Then hit enter. So it's negative 75. So this simplifies to, I'll put it over here. Hopefully you have room, negative 75. Okay, should go right there though. All right, write an equation. Remember it's y equals mx plus b. I'm substituting the m and the b. So my m is negative 75. So y equals negative 75. Attach the x to it so I know it's slope, then plus 700. Okay. Now I want you to tell what all this stuff means. So this is what we need to know about this and this and up here. So what does the slope mean for this situation? So the slope was negative 75 and technically it's over one. So this is my y over x. My y axis is amount owed. And then my x axis is months. But does it really make sense to have negative 75 owed? What's happening is the amount I owe is coming down $75 every month. So basically what that means is, is that, um, not him, Ezra. Ezra is paying $75 per month to his dad. Okay, he's paying $75 per month to his dad. Now, what does the y-intercept mean? Well, if this talks about how much money I owed and I'm up at 700, then that means that Ezra, he either owed 700 or you could even put he borrowed a total of 700 from his dad. Okay, he either borrowed it or you could put he owed 700 when he started, something like that, okay? Either one of those would be good. Beginning balance of what he owed his dad, something like that, okay? Notice how I've used the numbers in my explanation. It's not just the amount Ezra's paying per month. It's specific. It's $75 per month he's paying. All right. Now from a table. Lexi's ordering t-shirts from a website that charges a certain amount per t-shirt plus a flat rate for shipping. Use the table to answer the questions below. So we got to write an equation again, which means, again, we need slope and we need our y-intercept. So to find slope from a table, you've got to pick two points and use slope formula. Y minus Y over X minus X. Remember, on a table that's horizontal like this, the top one is X and the bottom one is Y. So I'm going to pick this point here and I'm going to pick the one right next to it. Again, if you need to, write these as ordered pairs so that you know not to subtract the ones that are up and down from each other. That's what I see the biggest problem is, is that you guys don't realize that. So I need to subtract my Y's over my X's. So I'm going to do 3224 minus 599 over 3 minus 0. 3224 minus 5.99. That is 2625 over 3, because 3 minus 0 is 3. Okay, so I'm going to simplify that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to do 26, or see if I can simplify it, and then put it over 3, and then hit enter, and I get 8.75. So my slope is 8.75 over 1, technically, or you could just leave it as 8.75. Now, to find my y-intercept from a table, I need to find where x equals 0, and then whatever the y value is, that's my b so my B is 5.99, my y-intercept. All right, put this into the formula or the equation, y equals mx plus B. We're substituting the M and the B. So y equals M is 8.75. I'm going to drop the 1. 
and then attach x to it so I know it's slope, and then plus 599. Okay, B, what does the slope mean for this situation? Well, the slope was the 8.75 over 1. Remember, that's x and that's y. Here's x, I'm sorry, y over x. Goodness sakes, y over x. This is my y, this is my x. So what this is saying is, is that it's 875 total cost. So we'll just say $8.75. And then the 1 is my x and it's t-shirt. So that means 875 per t-shirt for every shirt, okay? Each shirt, something like that, okay? What does the y-intercept mean in this situation? So my y-intercept is the 599. Remember, it has to do with the y-axis because it's a y-intercept. So it has something to do with cost. So you could just say it's a beginning fee of 599, but you'd be even more correct if you looked up here and you saw that there was a flat rate for shipping and that that 599 is what's represented by that shipping. Okay, so 599 for shipping. Or, like I said, 599 beginning balance of some sort. This one's just more correct based on the situation, but this one would be fine as well. Okay, as long as you understood that it was money. All right, so your next hint for the test is that on question number 14 it's got five true or false um three of them are false and two of them are true all right last one on this page use the descriptions of linear nonlinear and increasing decreasing to describe the function below so between x equals 0 and x equals 4. So remember, this is my x-axis. So here's x equals 0, and here is x equals 4. So what's happening? You do this. What is happening in this section of the graph? Okay, well, we first of all, it's got a curve to it, so we know it's nonlinear. Okay, and it is decreasing. Okay, so it's, well, we don't know if it's speed or what, but it, the graph is decreasing at this point. If it had labels, we could be even more specific. It's decreasing as it gets further away or whatever we're talking about, but since it's not, we're not going to worry about it. Now, between 4, so that one was 4, and x equals 10, so x equals 10 is right there, so it wants to know what's happening here on the graph, and there it's straight line, so it's linear. And because it's going up, it's increasing. Oh my goodness, last page. These are just really big questions, so that's why it takes up so much room. Goodness sakes. All right, here we go. Assume the graph represents the distance of three runners. So just A, B, and C are the three runners. Um, from the starting point of, of a race. FYI, all of the runners did better than Mrs. Walker and Mrs. Sherritt, because Mrs. Sherritt doesn't run. Okay, which runner maintained a steady pace throughout the race? So we want one, remember, linear is constant, okay? It's a steady, constant pace. So that would be the one, the only one that's linear. So that would be B. Which runner gradually increased their speed? So it's gonna, so remember, if it, um, if it starts really steep and then it kind of levels off, that's a decreasing. If it starts off kind of level and then comes around and goes up, then that's increasing. So that would be C. See, he starts off kind of slow and then increases. This one starts off kind of fast and then kind of levels out and decreases. Okay, so C would be the one who's got a gradual increase. So which runner slowed down at the end of the race? So that would be A, because he's doing really, really fast, and then he kind of slows down. So that's A. List the runners from, finish, from finishing the race first to third. So, okay, remember, the fastest time is who wins the race. Okay, so whoever reached the, the this is the end of the race here, end of race. So whoever reached it first is the one who got first place. So that would be this one here. So that would be C is first. 
okay? And then the next person to finish would be B. And then the last one would be A, because they finished a lot longer over there. Okay, now it said, which runner ran the furthest? Now this is tricky, okay? They're trying to trick you on this one. Okay, notice how the distance, if I was to take a ruler, Now, technically, A, maybe A never finished. I don't know. But technically, that line should come up a little bit further. I think it just got cut off. But it's supposed to come up a little further. And technically, I mean, it's a race. So the thing is, is that they all ended at the same ending point. They started at the same starting point, and they all ended at the same ending point. So this is none. They were all equal. Okay, it wants you to think that A ran the furthest because its line goes way out here like this, but that's not the case. Okay, A ran just as much distance, but it took A a lot longer, okay? All right, last one, number 18. Sketch a graph representing the distance Buster the dog is from his home based on the descriptions below. Label each segment. So home is his baseline, so this is home right here. Okay, anytime we're at the x-axis, Buster's at home, okay? So Buster noticed the front door was left open and he began walking down the street. Okay, so he's gonna walk down the street. He's probably just strolling, so he's walking pretty slow. So we're gonna make it kind of not very steep, okay? Buster saw the neighbor's cat and ran after it. So he is gonna definitely get faster. He's gonna run after the cat. So this is A and this is B. Buster stopped at the base of a tree because the cat ran to, up to escape it, so he stopped. So there's C. Then Buster's owner picked him up in a car and took him home. So the question is, can Buster run faster than the car can drive through a neighborhood? Probably not. So the cars are going to go faster, and then he's going to go straight down to home. So D. Just like that. Okay? That's it. That's all. That is the study guide. And you got three helper things for the test if you watched it all the way through. All right, guys, good luck on the test. I know you guys are going to do awesome. See ya.